knows what this new prison will do for you. This is your time. Is she? She's beautiful. How come you're not in school? I'm a model. Well, do you want to be in a video for my band? If you're in a band, sing me a song. Take on me. Jack, of all the characters you've played, was Brendan the most fun? Ah, uh, he was up there all right. That was a really good one. It's all about the girl, isn't it? What's this? All work. I have school in the morning. This is school. It's part of the draw, the fact that, like, I grew up an only child, but you were an only child into your teens, to have that kind of idealised older brother on screen. In a lot of ways it was, yeah. I really had a big longing for an older brother when I was a kid. And uh, I've got an uncle who's 18 years, old, 18 years older than me, and I remember being three or four years of age and being on a scooter with him on the way down to the lake one day in Blessington on our own and asking him if he'd be my older brother. And uh, he kind of assumed that role in my life. And he lived in the States, so I would only ever see him once or twice a year. But he would come home to hang out with me. And when he did, I just absolutely consumed everything that he had to say, everything that he had to do, everything about him, I just thought it was amazing. So in a lot of ways, this character was an homage of him, you know what I mean? I haven't told him about that. <laughs> and he's going to see the movie tonight, so I'll hear what he has to say about it first, and then we can chat about that later. <laughs> Rock and roll is a risk. You risk being ridiculed. Jesus, what are you all wearing? What surprised you most about working with John Carney? I think his openness and his uh, willingness to trust the people around him, particularly me, I was very surprised. John and I had known each other for quite a while before this. He produced my first film. So at this stage, I think I know about, I, I know John now about six or seven years. Um, but anyway, sat down with him and we chatted about it. And he said, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna make this film and it's quite a personal film and this character is very important to me. I think that, you know, you could do a really good job on it and it'd be great if you came on board. And I said, look, I'd be honored to do it, man. So what were the things that you worked into the character? I wanted him to be a character who, um, we could rely on for the comedy in the film. That he was funny, that he was quippy. Have you kissed her yet? She's got a boyfriend. Pulled off in his car, music blaring. What was he listening to? Genesis. No woman can truly love a man who listens to Phil Collins. Although he is giving this kid his direction, he's not like, He's not the perfect brother either. I mean, I want him to be somebody who was the most flawed person in the family, probably, and who was just quite broken as a person, but managed to find it in himself to give something decent to his brother and to give him some direction to help him define himself as a human being. You are truly on a hero's journey. Are you up to that? I think she's just an amazing human being. Think big, Connor. I know you're a fan of progressive rock. You like your Pink Floyd, so Love was it man. was it very hard to say that Genesis line in the movie? I've never been a massive fan of Genesis. I do like a bit of Phil Collins from time to time and a bit of Peter Gabriel. I don't know if it's an entirely true comment to make, but uh, it certainly rolled off the tongue all right. I actually love this band. <laughs> what style would you say you were? I'm a futurist. Well, see you in the future then.